Across the heaven, a visiting hour, so I could just show up and bring the news. She's getting old, and I wish that you met her. The things that you learned from me, I got them all from you. I just stay. If I could take you home, I don't know what they'd say. It's for the best. So I will live life the way you taught me and make it all.
Will you stand?
Our help is in the name of the Lord, who make heaven and earth. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. And the psalmist says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. On behalf of the session and congregation of Grace Presbyterian Church, I welcome to this time. And we gather to give thanks to God for Helen Ford and the woman uh, that she has been and will always be for us. And we gather to give witness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ in whom Helen had life and has life eternal. And we gather as a community of faith to support our, this family in their grief, to lend them comfort and care and love. My name is Jason Davenport, and I have the, had the privilege of serving alongside Jess and Helen at the Riverview Presbyterian Church, and I'm thankful for our time together and thankful to be with you today. My condolences and my prayers go out to all of you. Would you join me in a time of prayer? Eternal God, we gather to worship you this day to give you thanks for the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, in whom we have the hope of eternal life. We gather today to give you thanks for the life of Helen Ford, your precious child, with whom you walked all the days of her life. We thank you that for her death is past and your promises are made complete. We lift before you this family and these friends who mourn her loss knowing that you are our help and our salvation, our ever-present help in times of trouble, remembering that you are our safe harbor and our strong tower. You keep our going out and our coming in. You watch over us and you sustain us. Pour out your sustaining grace now for this family that they may know of your love for your people. Uplift them during this service of worship and during the celebration of Helen's life and during all the days to come. Oh God, we bless you for the great company of all those who have kept the faith and finished their race and who now rest from their labor. Help us, oh God, to believe where we have not seen, trusting you to lead us throughout our years, bringing us at last with all your saints into the joy of your home. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is the resurrection and the life. Amen. Sorry, I gotta find my spot. <laughs> you know, one of the things about me is that um, 
I really just started following Christ myself. And one of the last words I do remember Grandma coherently saying to me was that she was very proud of my path on this. So, you know, I'm still learning. Um, John eleven twenty five. 25. Uh, Jesus said to her, for I'm the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even when they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And she said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. Thank you. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rains fall soft upon your fields. May God hold you in his, sorry, and until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. This is a little poem I wrote um, about the loss we've had in our family this year. 22, and my room is filled with dried roses, not from lovers or from friends, but from caskets and memorials. It seems as if dried roses are always in bloom. I promise I tend to my garden. It is constantly watered from an endless river of tears, yet all I seem to get are dried roses. 22, at the prime of my life, should be out celebrating life, but here I am, once again, at a celebration of life. So I sit and weep, I pay my respects, and I'll collect another rose that will soon dry up. Am I good at handling death or just immune? I don't know which is better, but a skill I have mastered, so how can I help? It is spring for many, I see others with bright flowers, yet I'm not filled with envy. Although my room is filled with dried roses, my heart is filled with bright memories of people I loved. I'm grateful for my bouquet of dried roses because I experienced their blooms. Before I start, I'd like to say it as I approached the church and saw my brother, mom still has a hand in how she dresses us 60 years later. <laughs> we didn't talk about that. Most teachers I know go to college and then get married and maybe, maybe they'll have kids. Our mom, she got married and had five kids. And then while raising those five kids went to college. I can just imagine her in that first job interview for a teacher. The interviewer may be saying, Mrs. Ford, I see that you graduated from Winthrop College under, and, and under the classifications of other qualifications. It says that you've been a homemaker for 20 years. You raised four wrestlers and their little sister and you worked part-time. You're hired, when can you start? <laughs> I was always amazed about my mom and what she did and accomplished. Mom taught me a lot of lessons, and, and there's always been that one where there's no just single path to your destination. Don't be afraid to make a new path or start one of your own. And she taught us all that you're never too old or too busy to accomplish something big, and you're never too important to be, do something kind for others. Growing up in mom's house, there was always lessons. There were swim lessons art lessons, guitar lessons, dance lessons, and yes, we all endured, every one of us, we all endured baton twirling lessons. <laughs> there were also more subtle lessons, the watch what I do lessons. I don't know many people that can say, I went to my mom and dad's college graduation. The scattered within those tangible lessons, mom taught us as much or maybe even more by who she was and what she did, and not by her words. Mom was our most loyal cheerleader, and no matter what our aspirations might have been, whether it was to be an Olympic athlete, a rock star, or an astronaut, none of us made any of those, but mom was always there to make us feel like we could do anything if we just tried, and we believed her. And I know that she was always proud of even our failures as well as our many successes. Mom also liked to express her affection with hugs. As the kids got older, those hugs got a little bit bigger. And sometimes mom would have turned that hug into a headlock. 
She actually thought that she might be able to flip one of her 150-pound teenage boys. And sometimes when she would grab me around the neck like that, I would lift her off her feet. And she'd squeeze my head even harder, I guess, hoping that I would say uncle. And I, ne I never did. Um, she would walk away unscathed, and so would I. And those were the hugs I missed the most and loved the best. Just the other day, Judy and I were talking, and she reminded me of the many times we would go camping. Five kids can easily pick up more dirt than a Hoover vacuum. And each night before we'd get in bed, we would hang our dirty feet over the edge of the bunks. And mom would go around and clean every dirty feet with a hot, warm rag. How good it felt to slide our feet into those sleeping bags. A simple act of love lasting a lifetime. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13, these, these, these three things remain, faith, hope, and love, but love being the greatest. Mom always gave us faith, faith to do our best. She always gave us hope, hope to strive for more and to be more every day. But truly the greatest gift she gave us was that of genuine, unconditional love. And for that, we have been so blessed to call our mom our first teacher and our favorite teacher. There are some times in our daily lives that we receive little messages or signs that we can't explain. Like the time just recently that my dad and I were driving to the hospital to see mom, and we were talking about his 1956 Ford, where he had a glove, in his glove box, he had a uh, 45 record player. And uh, that brought up the memory that one of the records that he had, mom didn't like too well, and so she threw it away. And uh, so I, he told me that the song was called Little Blue Man. So I requested on my phone to pull up Little Blue Man, and Sure enough, YouTube pop, popped it up on my phone and started playing it, and my mom was right. It was very bad. <laughs> so the song finished playing, and if you've ever tuned into YouTube, you know that generally the songs that follow afterwards are something of the same genre or same era or something of that nature, but immediately following the, the Little Blue Man was something totally different. It was an Irish singing group, Celtic women, singing, You Raise Me Up. As I said, there are sometimes there are signs that you just can't explain, but the song was perfectly fitting for that moment. My mom was proud of her Irish heritage, and she had the Irish blessing in our home, and as Katie read, the blessing says, until we meet again. It doesn't say if we meet again. My mom's father passed away when she was just 16 years old and she didn't let the loss, that loss control her life in constant sorrow. Instead, she led her life with constant faith. She never lost the love for her father or the faith that someday she would see him again. Just the same faith she had for other family members and friends that she lost during her life. During this time on, our, on earth, I consider we have chores to do that my brother just talked about, nice things that we do. To, when our chores are through, we are called home. During one of my trips that I was coming up here to visit my mom during the, her declining illnesses, another unexplained sign came up on my playlist. It was a song, and in the chorus of that song, it reminded me of my mom's faith of that someday that she would see her father again. It was a note. It was about a note that was found. And in your bulletin, there is a similar note. It is your note to share with your loved ones. And while my mom was in the hospital, I whispered to her, that her chores were done. Her chores were through. 
She had done a great job. I told her I loved her. And then when my chores were through, I would see her again as well. So mom, between now and then, until I see you again, I'll be loving you. Love me. Glory be to God at first. I only have two minutes, but I got to say, <sighs> Miss Helen was a wonderful person as well as Mr. Jeff. And I had the opportunity to know them for seven to eight years. And they like milkshakes, strawberry and chocolate. So my condolences go to the family and I'm gonna say a prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your glory. I ask right now in the name of Jesus, you say to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So I thank you, O oh God, for receiving Miss Heaven, Miss Helen, in the name of Jesus. Now I ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, that you touch Mr. Jesse. Oh, Father, you say that in the name of Jesus, that you will never leave us or forsake us. Strengthen him, Father, from the crown of his head to the bottom of his feet. And for, his, for her sons and her daughters, oh, God, I ask that you bless them in the name of Jesus, the nephews, the nieces, the grands. Lift them up today. And you must have friends that came in this building today, Father. We give you the glory. We ask that you cover each and one of us. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Hear now and be comforted by these words from the Holy Scriptures from the book of Revelation. Selected verses from chapter 21 and 22. And then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory unto it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. Nothing accursed will be found there any more. But the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more night. They need no light or lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Thanks be to God. I want to say just a few words because uh, most of the words that 
need to be said today have been spoken. We gather today in sadness because this woman, this woman who was beloved by so many, is no longer here. But we gather here because of a promise. We gather here because we have been promised a new heaven and a new earth. We have been promised that God will wipe every tear from our eyes, that there will be no more sickness, and that death will be no more. And we gather to cling to that promise. And if we need somebody to show us how to live into that promise, we don't have to look any farther than Helen. Helen had great courage to live her faith. Because she believed these words, these fanciful words of a new heaven and a new earth and eternal life, because she believed it, it enabled her to live with confidence, with hope, with grace, with love. She teaches us to be a lifelong learner. Nobody else has the guts. Well, maybe, maybe she went back to college just to get away from you all. I mean, there's always that possibility. It's like, get me out of the house. Where can I go? I know. Nobody else has the guts to do that. Helen did. And then, I guess she figured after teaching the five of y'all that teaching public school would be no problem at all. But she did it. And she modeled learning. She modeled being an educator, not just of subject matter, but of life. Helen lived with losses that could have done any of the rest of us in. From losing her father as an adolescent young woman, to tragic losses of her son and her sister, who were lost before they died. Nevertheless, she persisted in faith. I don't know how she did that, but she did. And she models for us, she who lived through stuff none of the rest of us are living through, modeled for us how to persist in faith. She knew she was not alone, that God was with her, leading her to that promised new day. I was um, looking for an image to use with her, and you gave it to me. We're in the season of Lent, of preparation for Easter. This, today is the third Sunday in Lent, and in uh, about a month, we will um, join as communities of faith on Monday, Thursday. And Monday, Thursday is the night that Jesus had uh, gathered for dinner with his disciples, and we call it the, the Last Supper. He instituted the Lord's Supper. But as he gathered with his disciples that night, he played the role of a servant, and he took a basin, and he took a towel, and he went from person to person around the table and washed their feet. Well, it wasn't a symbolic gesture. Their feet were dirty because they'd been walking in sandals in the dust. And that was the job of the lowest servant in the house, to wash the feet of the guests. And Jesus did it. He washed their feet one by one and 
Peter said, oh, you're not washing my feet. And Jesus said, oh, yeah. If I don't, you don't have any place with me. And so Peter, not known for his subtlety, said, okay, then wash all of me. And foot washing in some religious, you know, in some communities of faith has become a symbolic thing on, on, on uh, Monday, Thursday. And I love, I love that for your mom, it was not a symbolic gesture at all. She washed your feet. What an amazing gift. I would not have washed my children's feet. I would have told them to go wash their own feet. But she didn't. Jesus said, you know, if you're going to be my people, do what I have done. And Helen did. And showed us what it was to be a disciple of Jesus. From teaching, from loving unconditionally, to washing feet. Thanks be to God.
Will you pray with me? O oh God, before whom generations rise and pass away, we praise you for all your servants who, having lived this life in faith, now live eternally with you. Especially we thank you for your servant, Helen, whose baptism is now complete in death. We praise you for the gift of her life and for all in her that was good and kind and faithful. For the grace that you gave her, that kindled in her the love of your name and enabled her to serve you faithfully. We thank you for the way that she modeled being your disciple. Always learning, always loving, always serving. We thank you that for Helen, death is past and pain is ended, and that she has now entered the joy that you have prepared. Almighty God, in Jesus Christ, you promised many rooms within your house. Give us faith to see beyond touch and sight some sure sign of your kingdom, and where vision fails, to trust your love which never fails. Lift heavy sorrow and give us good hope in Jesus so we may bravely walk our earthly way and look forward to glad reunion in the life to come through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. to tell you that somebody walked out with my bulletin, so I got to make sure that the benediction is the next thing. Yes, it is. We had multiple copies up there, and some of y'all walked out with all of them. After the benediction, uh, we will listen to uh, a bit of a song that you will find familiar, and then uh, I will lead the family out and we will be going directly out to the columbarium for a very brief uh, service uh, of committal at the columbarium. You are welcome to follow us out there. I will warn you that by the time you get there, it might be over um, because it is a very brief service. And um, if you wish, you may follow us out there. If you wish, you may head down to room 15, which is down the hall and to the left and uh, there are refreshments waiting for you there. And as soon as we're done at the columbarium, the family will come and join you there. The God of peace who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, make you complete in everything good so that you may do God's will working among us that which is pleasing in God's sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, remain with you always. Amen.